thought I told him to spray it with water to retain moisture before applying the film. You can't treat a glaze lily like a cactus. If Sanjay does this again, the loss will have to come out of his food expenses. Uh, I'll go talk to him. At this rate, he won't even be able to afford eating cacti for much longer. Hey, Tainari! Oh, <laughs> it's you two. It's been a while. What brings you to Port Ormos? We didn't have anything to do, and this place looked pretty lively, so we decided to stop by. But, uh, what's with all the flowers around here? Well, Port Ormos is currently organizing a flower exhibition featuring flowers and plants from all over Tevat, so I came to help out. The exhibition includes flowers from every corner of the world, each with their own unique properties and needs. With that in mind, the curator commissioned a flower pot from Kisharawar capable of retaining heat and moisture. Even so, an expert is still required to develop tailored transportation and care plans for each type of flower. Oh, and that expert is you, right? Not this time, no. I'm just here to help out. The expert in charge is someone else. Mr. Tainari! Sanjay! He, uh, he confused the poisonous bulbs with garlic shoots, and he ate them! Uh, never mind. Forget about what I said about the food expenses. Apologies, Traveler, Paimon. Looks like I've got something to take care of. I'll be back in just a moment. Tainari's busy no matter where he is, huh? Yeah, seems like it. Hey, don't look at Paimon like that! Paimon is super careful about what she eats. Well, looks like Tainari might be busy for a while. Let's take a look around the port in the meantime. Rainbow roses, glaze lilies, and Cecilia's? No wonder. It's... it's getting worse. Why? Look at you! Oh. But, uh, I was... I'm just a moment ago. She didn't even eat anything weird. A moment of your time, you two? If it's not too much trouble, perhaps you could try this incense. From your attire, I imagine you two aren't from Sumeru either. Seeing as we're both travelers from abroad, it's only right that we help each other out should the occasion arise. Oh, so you're here for the flower exhibition too? Hmm, I suppose that's accurate. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Emily, a perfumer from Fontaine. Thank you so much for your help just now. Oh, and this is... The Traveler, right? I've heard a lot about you from the Steambird. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. What happened back there? Why did Paimon start sneezing all of a sudden? Hmm. Have you ever heard of hay fever? 
To put it simply, when inhaled, certain pollens can trigger abnormal physical reactions. Uh, but Paimon has seen these kinds of flowers before and nothing weird happened then. Well, we're all different. The factors that can trigger a reaction to certain stimuli vary by person. In isolation, the effects of certain pollens may seem minimal, but inhaling various types at once can trigger a more overt reaction. But there's no need to worry. Pollen allergies can be effectively mitigated with the use of medication. Oh, well, that's good. Traveler, Paimon, there you are. Is everything all right? I left in such a hurry, I forgot to warn you about all the pollen in the air. Emily? Ah, what a coincidence. Looks like my worry was misplaced then. The Traveler and Paimon are in good hands. It was nothing, really. We happened to run into each other shortly after my arrival, and I offered them a bit of help, that's all. I'm more curious as to why you thought the Traveler and Paimon were in danger. Allergies are highly unpredictable. If you were concerned the pollen might trigger a reaction, that must mean something similar has happened in the past. Remember the first time we met? You fainted after inhaling Spirit Borneal. It's not really something you can make sense out of, Paimon. There are all kinds of allergies out there, caused by a variety of different factors. Some people are even allergic to almonds. It's not something you can generalize. Exactly. I even encountered a case in Fontaine where someone had an allergic reaction to soba noodles their family brought back from Inazuma. Whoa. Good thing Paimon isn't allergic to anything delicious. In a manner of speaking, although you could say the patients I deal with are rather unusual. In addition to medicine, Emily is also very knowledgeable about botany. She's taught me a lot about the native flora around Fontaine. And that's where my expertise ends, I'm afraid. When it comes to breadth of knowledge, Tainari certainly comes out on top. A flower expert? Oh, Paimon's got it! You must be the expert Tainari mentioned, the one in charge of the exhibition! Uh, wrong again, I'm afraid. Well, I did come for the exhibition, but only to inquire about the Auguste variety. I'm not involved in any official capacity. Oh, Paimon was sure she got it right this time! It's a kind of flower that was once popular in Fontaine. The perfume made from it also bears the same name, Auguste. Auguste, huh? That's not a name you hear often nowadays. In an ancient language, the word is said to mean sacred or noble. It's sometimes used as a name for people as well. Ah, that reminds me. Are you familiar with a historical event in Fontaine known as Perfume Mania? Perfume Mania was an event that occurred in Fontaine nearly 20 years ago. It all started when several merchants released their own lines of high-end, expensive perfumes, marketing them as must-have luxury products, the very symbol of elegance itself. No one anticipated the absolute frenzy this would create on the market, causing the price of perfumes to skyrocket. The demand was twofold. What some saw as a status symbol, most saw as a money-making opportunity. You could take advantage of the soaring price by hoarding them and reselling at even higher margins. The value of these products became so inflated, regular bottles of perfume were even going for hundreds of thousands of more. This resulted in countless disputes and scams. But at the end of the day, perfume is just perfume. The market value greatly exceeded the intrinsic worth of the product, creating an economic bubble that was never going to last. 
Luckily, the Palais Mermonia recognized the danger and intervened before the craze could truly spread. Many profiteers and scammers were thrown in jail as a result. In the end, only a few wealthy families were affected when the bubble popped. What does all this have to do with that Auguste you mentioned earlier? Well, during the craze, the most popular perfume was none other than Auguste. The demand far exceeded the supply, to the point where it once sold for 10 million mora a bottle. 10 million? Then what about now? After the mania ended, most perfumes returned to a normal price. Auguste was the only exception. Its namesake, the flower used to create it, went extinct. As a result, no new bottles of Auguste have been made, and the value of the perfume remains exceedingly high. Indeed, the Auguste flower was not a natural variety, you see. It was specially cultivated for use in perfume making. When the bubble popped, all the flower beds used for its cultivation were destroyed in a fire. The variety has never been seen since. But didn't you say you came to the exhibition to look for it? Ah, oh, yes. I came to investigate a certain rumor that the Auguste flower has reappeared in Sumeru. It's causing quite the stir in the Fontaine perfume market. Traveler, we should help Emily look for it. I have to agree. Emily wrote me to ask if I could look into the rumor, but the forest rangers haven't received any reports of new plant species recently. Even if I can locate the flower, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed, Paimon. I don't have any Grand Mora making endeavors planned. <laughs> Divine, noble, one of a kind, all beautiful sentiments to be sure, but to me, they overshadow the very essence of the product. When it comes to perfume, I want people to forget the price and the prestige and focus on the beauty of the fragrance itself. Of course, there's also a more practical reason. In recent years, low-grade counterfeit versions of Auguste have been popping up on the Fontaine perfume market. Every so often, someone will claim to have recreated the unique scent of Auguste, and the rumor mill will start comparing the counterfeits to my own work. Okay, that's more like the reason Paimon had in mind. Ever since that rumor started, Three new perfumes claiming to be made from the Auguste flower have appeared on the market. If I can dispel the fanaticism surrounding Auguste, even just by proving the rumor to be false, Fontaine's perfume market can finally start to get back to normal. Then I'll be free from all the stories and added meaning and just focus on making what I like. That makes sense. Oh, I would, of course, be grateful for your help, but I wouldn't want to trouble you. Well, you said it yourself. We're both travelers from abroad, so it's only right that we help each other out. Ha! <laughs> I suppose you're right. Then you have my thanks. Based on the information I have so far, it's unclear if the rumor is true. Mr. Edgar also thinks it's too early to say. But you could always go talk to him. He was there all those years ago, after all. Maybe he'll know something. Huh. I was just about to pay him a visit at the hotel. Edgar? Who's that? The person you've been trying to guess this whole time. The flower expert in charge of the exhibition. He's also the most respected and experienced perfumer in the area. Back when he was still working in Fontaine, Auguste was his creation. I should also mention, he was my teacher, the one who taught me the basics of perfumery when I apprenticed in Sumeru. So, this guy was a famous perfumer in Fontaine, but then he came to Sumeru to teach people from Fontaine? It sounds confusing. 
It's a long story. If you're interested, we can talk more about it when we see him. He should be staying near the hotel. I need to stay back and keep an eye on things here at the port. If something happens, don't hesitate to find me. The exhibitor paid a large sum to rent out the hotel and surrounding buildings. They're being used as temporary storage facilities and lodging for exhibition personnel. Yeah, what if guests come early? They won't have anywhere to stay! Also, renting out this big of a hotel, how are they going to make that more of that? It's been so long, I almost didn't recognize you, Edgar. Well, you and your brother haven't changed a bit. Oh yeah, look, all this catching up is nice and all, but let's get down to business. We need to talk about Kyria. Is he... Hold on, we have guests. It's nice to see you again, Master. Emily? Is that you? <laughs> oh, it's been years. Look at you. You're all grown up. I've heard you've become quite the famous perfumer in Fontaine. It would seem the student has surpassed the master. Oh, well, it's all thanks to your mentorship. Ah, hardly, hardly. I taught you the basics. Hearing you call me Master, well, I'm not sure I'm deserving of that title. I've taught many students here in Sumeru over the years, but I've yet to see one turn out quite as accomplished as you. You're the only one who can take credit for that success. And who are these two? I don't recall you mentioning them in your letter. Ah, they're my new friends, the Traveler and Paimon. Emily's friends. Well then, the pleasure is all mine. And these two gentlemen? Are they friends of yours, Master? <laughs> <laughs> of course! We're perfume merchants from Fontaine. I'm Oud, and this here is my younger brother, Blaze. Edgar and the two of us are old friends. <laughs> Isn't that right, gentlemen? <laughs> uh, yes. Merchant Brothers? You must be here to look for the August flower, then. Huh? <laughs> well, what respectable perfume merchant hasn't heard of a goose? Anyone in the business would be interested in the rumors. I'm guessing you're here for the same reason, Emily. We were just about to get into it, so you three might as well join in. I commissioned a few Eremites to do some scouting for me. They searched all over Sumeru, but there were no sightings of the August flower. That being said, there are people in Port Ormos who claim to have smelled a unique fragrance on the streets. Definitely floral, but still distinct. Some of them were merchants who lived in Fontaine 20 years ago. According to them, the fragrance smelled exactly like the August they remember from back then. A one-of-a-kind, divine and noble scent. Maybe someone around here just happens to have a bottle of August from back then. No, I don't think so. I doubt that's the case. Even if someone had a bottle that was never opened, the fragrance of the perfume would have changed over time. Very few perfumes can go decades without a change in scent. August is even more prone to that kind of shift. Only a few bottles still exist in Fontaine, and their scent would have completely degraded by now. 
Although, could there be a flower out there with a similar fragrance? Or an accord with the same bass notes? Impossible! If a goose were that easy to replicate, it would never have sold for such a high price all those years ago. The goose flower is back. It has to be. Technically speaking, the scent wouldn't be impossible to imitate. Well, let's table that question for now. Edgar, did any of those people mention where the scent was coming from? No. By the time they realized they had smelled something, the scent was already gone. If I hadn't asked about it, they probably wouldn't have given the experience a second thought. Compared to things we see and hear, smells can be much easier to overlook. Hmm. It almost sounds like someone wearing their goosed fragrance past them on the street. Wait. Are you saying... <laughs> Just thinking out loud! <laughs> don't pay me any mind. We don't have much to go off of right now, but we can't rule out that possibility. I'll send some more people to investigate. You all traveled so far to be here. Why don't you rest in the hotel for a bit? Uh, Ood, Blaze, this is the key to your room. Ooh, you've got the keys to the rooms? Do we get free lodging too? Ah, my apologies. All the rooms in the hotel are accounted for, I'm afraid. Most are being used for storage ahead of the exhibition, you see. I managed to tidy up one of the rooms for these two at the last minute, but by the time Emily wrote to me, there was no more space left for her to stay. Oh, and we just showed up out of the blue. Guess that means there's definitely no space for us. Uh, I should have been more considerate. Here I am with an entire hotel at my disposal and no place to offer you to stay, even after you made the trip all the way to Sumeru. Don't worry, Master. I can sleep on the boat tonight. Or I could even camp in the wild. It would give me the opportunity to collect some plant specimens while I'm here in Sumeru. Ah, even better. Although, would it be possible for me to leave some of my luggage here? It would be rather cumbersome to take it camping. It shouldn't take up too much space. Well, uh, about that... <laughs> of course, no trouble at all. My brother and I will keep an eye on them for you, uh, as long as you don't mind, mademoiselle. All right, then. Uh, Oud, why don't you take Emily inside and find a suitable place for her luggage? I'll prepare some refreshments and join you in a bit. I'm sorry I couldn't offer you a room. It's all right, Master. I know it was sudden. I'll be sure to make it up to you with a nice cup of tea. The smell of flowers is so strong! Didn't Edgar say he tidied up around here? There's still so many flowers! Pilot took a peek through the window earlier and his house was packed with flowers. 
Looks like this exhibition is gonna be huge! No, that's a florist thing. We work closely with the essential oils of various plants, but to maintain a sharp sense of smell, most perfumers prefer to keep their homes free of strong odors. Oh! Guess there's just too much to store for the exhibition then. Oh, this room seems to be a connected suite, and my brother will be staying on the other side of the suite. Blaze, while you're out, why don't you bring our luggage over as well? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Blaze! Oh, uh, ah, yes, of course. All right, then. Uh, where can we find your luggage, mademoiselle? Blaze will go fetch it for you. It's still at the port. In addition to some daily necessities, there's also a case of amber wine that I brought back from Fontaine. Could I trouble you to bring that back as well? It would be the perfect way to repay you for your hospitality. <laughs> How generous. I should thank you on my brother's behalf. You've stumbled upon his weakness. He's aloof about most things, but alcohol is his one true love. Is that so? Mr. Ood, Mr. Blaze, thanks for... Hey! What are you doing? That's Master's voice. Edgar! Master! Hey, Edgar! Are you alright? Can you hear me? <sighs> Who did this? Kyria. August. Kyria. Hey, Edgar? Edgar! No, don't shake him. He's injured. Just leave him to me. You two can... Oh, thank you. Skin is flushed. Pupils are dilated. <sighs> but he's still breathing. I checked. It doesn't look like anyone passed through here. Oh, but that's impossible. It's not like that kid can just grow some wings and fly away. Oh, uh, the culprit, I mean. <laughs> it's not like the culprit could have just disappeared into thin air. did this was hiding in the flowers before they attacked Edgar? did this was hiding in the flowers before Oh, 
Really? You think so? Well, we looked all over, but the only clue we found was that bottle. The most important thing we can do now is focus our efforts on treating Master. Can you help me move him inside? So, how's he doing? When I administered emergency treatment, I discovered a residue in his nose and mouth. Master was most likely forced to ingest a certain liquid. He's still unconscious and inducing vomiting could obstruct his airways. We'll have to look into other clues for now. Ah, yes. The scent is the same, but the chemical composition is still unclear. We'll have to do further tests to determine if it's the same liquid and how toxic it is to the human body. But first, I do believe there are two people who could shed some light on the situation. Mr. Sylvain, Mr. Lucian. W wait, you know... Hey! <clears throat> Were you talking to us, mademoiselle? I'm afraid we'd never heard of those names before. <laughs> hmm. Before arriving in Sumeru, I asked a friend from the Special Patrol to look into the creators of a ghost. There were four people in total. The perfumer, Edgar, the one thrust into the limelight, and three others. A researcher from Sumeru responsible for cultivating the Agust flower, and two merchant brothers responsible for promoting the product on the market. The two brothers capitalize on the mythos surrounding Agust. Their actions lured in numerous speculators and profiteers, inflating the price of Agust even further. In the end, they were sent to the Fortress of Meripede for falsifying their accounts and destabilizing the market. If you do the math, they should be out of prison by now. Huh. And what does that have to do with us? There are countless merchant families in Fontaine. Uh, you gonna accuse them of being criminals too? Every time your brother called you Blaze, it took you several seconds to respond. But when I called you Lucian just now, the name registered immediately. I... Ah, oh, Miss Emily. Out of respect for your position as a famous perfumer in Fontaine, I'm inclined to believe that was simply a poor attempt at humor. You have a bright future ahead of you. You wouldn't want to develop a reputation as someone who throws around false accusations, especially among merchant circles. Hmm. You claim to be regular perfume merchants, and yet, when I brought up amber wine, you took it to be alcohol. What? Amber wine is a perfume I created several years ago. It wasn't particularly renowned, but I'm certain any respectable perfume merchant in Fontaine would know of it. Unless, until recently, they were living somewhere completely cut off from the perfume world. Hmm, somewhere like the Fortress of Meripede, perhaps? Emily, you little! <laughs> don't misunderstand, Mr. Sylvain. I don't bring this up to criticize you. No matter what happened all those years ago, the court has already passed its judgment. But Master's life is in danger. We need to learn whatever we can about the person who has done this. If Master's attack had something to do with a goose, I would imagine the two of you might also be in danger. So I'd like to trouble you for some information, if I may. Tell me about Kyria. <sighs> Fine. As you wish. Sylvain! Lucian, if this will help us find Kyria, then it will be all worth it. Besides, we've already told most of the stuff to the Maison Orly, anyway. You were right, Miss Emily. There were four of us at the beginning. 
Myself, Lucian, Edgar, and the researcher from Sumeru in charge of flower cultivation, Vijava. Sometime down the road, the Mara Chaussee Phantom came knocking, saddled us with a list of accusations, and started looking into our books. They did their meddling, and my brother Edgar and I were forced to serve time in the fortress as a result. Sounds like he's still upset about that. Wait, then how did Edgar end up in Sumeru? Master was convicted as an accomplice, so he only had to serve a few years. He decided to move to Sumeru so that he could put those events behind him. Still, Master was depressed for a long time after that. He stopped making new perfumes and focused on introducing students to the craft instead. That's how I met him. My parents had to relocate to Sumeru for work when I was a child, so I had the chance to study under him for a little while. But we can talk about that some other time. I want to hear more about this researcher, Vijava. Like us, Vijava was also staring down an investigation from the Mara Chaussee Phantom. But before the Phantom showed up at her door, she set all the flower beds on fire along with much of the mora we managed to earn. All the august flowers, everything we worked to create, was reduced to nothing but a pile of ash. But destroying all that evidence, wouldn't that make things worse for her? It didn't matter at that point, because she died in the fire as well. What? <sighs> Sounds like you did an investigation of your own. Why even ask us if you knew all of this already? The name wasn't mentioned in any of the files I reviewed either. But you two seem quite familiar with him. Uh, Kyria was Vijava's younger brother. He was just a clueless kid back then. Somewhere in his teens, I think. He helped his sister with her work sometimes, but that was pretty much it. He didn't have any idea what we were doing. Vijava kept him close most of the time. The three of us were probably the only ones who even knew she had a brother. After our operation was compromised, he disappeared. There were no signs of him until recently, when people started saying the Auguste flower had reappeared in Sumeru. So you think Kyria took something with him back then? Something that allowed him to reproduce the Auguste flower? <sighs> Vijava doted on the kid like you wouldn't believe. She even told us to give her cut to her brother if anything happened to her. If she left something behind before she died, believe me, Kiri is the one that has it. And judging by the liquid in that bottle, the Auguste flower wasn't the only thing he reproduced. He managed to replicate the perfume itself. So the liquid Edgar was forced to ingest really was Auguste. Wait, does that mean Auguste is poison? <clears throat> Poison? No, no. Of course not. No perfume is meant to be ingested. Even small amounts can be dangerous, let alone ingesting a whole bottle at once. If a goose could be considered a poison, we wouldn't have even sold half a bottle back then. Edgar fell unconscious because Kyria forced him to drink perfume. It just happened to be a goose. He probably thought we had something to do with his sister's death. But to tell you the truth, I have no idea why she did all that. We're not looking for Kyria because we have it out for him. We just wanted to see how he was doing. And, if possible, work together to bring back a ghost. We only went to prison for a bit of fraud and market manipulation. It had nothing to do with the product itself. 
As long as we keep things honest this time around, bringing the product back to market would almost be like honoring his sister's memory. So that's why you never mentioned Kyria during your interrogation? Yes, exactly. We were just looking out for the kid. Anyway, that's all we know. If you're looking for information on what's in a goose, or what to do if you ingest it, there are only two people to ask. Edgar or Kyria himself. Well, at least we're able to say for certain that the substance Edgar ingested was in fact a goose. That gives us a direction for further testing. <sighs> well then, I'd say that was a very enlightening discussion. Ah, well, glad to hear it. Lucian, let's head back to the room and rest a bit. With everything that's happened, there are things that need reconsidering. Yes, of course. Hmm. Ah, oh, you think so too? Hmm. That does seem to be the case. Pity we don't have more evidence. But based on Sylvain's tone of voice just now, I suspect further questioning will only result in more made-up answers. The way you exposed them like that, just based on a hunch? That was genius! Oh, right! Earlier you said you were only sort of a doctor, and that your patients were... unusual. Oh, yes. That's because most of the patients I encounter are already dead. So you're a forensic doctor? Close. I'm actually a forensic cleaner. Once the forensic team and the Mara Chasse Phantom are done collecting evidence from the scene, I'm in charge of clearing away the final traces my patients leave on the world. In fact, with just a small alteration to the formula, the same tincture used as the base of perfume can also be made into a cleaning agent. Basically, there are two sides to forensics. Those who collect evidence to expose the truth, and those who clean up the smells, bloodstains, and other substances left behind at the scene. I've learned a lot in my line of work, and I've witnessed a lot of death. But this time, we may still save the patient. Actually, Traveler, could I trouble you to report back to Tainari and the officers at Port Armos? We should update them on the situation. I'll stay here and continue to look after Master. Now that we have a sample of Auguste, I'm hoping further analysis won't be too difficult. Master looks a lot older than when I last saw him. I just hope he can hold on. Whoa, why the rush? Did something happen? What? Edgar was attacked? He's the most famous perfumer in the region. Someone who's helped countless people around Port Ormos. How could this happen? Sheriff, have you received any reports of a suspicious individual fleeing through the bazaar? No. But we've got eyes all over the area. I'm sure someone's seen Kyria. I'll start gathering my forces. We won't let him get away. What about you, Tainari? Do you have a plan? Hmm. I'm sure the Sheriff can handle things over at the scene, and I doubt Emily needs my help looking after Mr. Edgar. Uh, but she said she's not a real doctor. Then she was far too modest. 
She may not be a doctor by trade, but she has a deeper understanding of human anatomy and pharmacology than most scholars from the Amorta Darshan. Not to mention the fact that Mr. Edgar's condition is related to perfume. Emily is certainly in the best position to help him. As for me, I'll head to the academia and see what I can learn about Vijava and Kyria. Oh, that's right! Vijava was supposed to be a scholar from Sumeru. Do you recognize the name? From Emily's letter, certainly, but that was the first time I'd heard of it. The academia produces a lot of scholars, and there are plenty of graduates who choose to pursue a career outside their darshan. I didn't have time to look into it earlier, but now it seems like Vijava's past could be critical to getting to the bottom of what happened to Mr. Edgar. I have friends in Sumeru City that can help me investigate. With any luck, we'll have news to share by tomorrow. I'll leave you and Emily to watch over things here in Port Ormos.